today's video, we will show you how to quickly enable complete end-to-end -end encryption in the cloud using HiveMQ and self-signed TLS certificates. Let's get going! What is TLS? Transport Layer Security is a cryptographic protocol that allows secure and encrypted communication at the transport layer between a client application and a server. On top of the provided transport layer encryption, TLS also ensures data confidentiality. How does TLS work? Participating communication partners use certificates to verify each other's identity, authenticity. This method prevents man-in-the-middle attacks. The sender can be certain that the receiver gets exactly the same data as the sender sent, and vice versa. HiveMQ allows three TLS configurations. Server-side TLS, where the MQTT broker presents a certificate to the connecting clients. Client-side TLS, where the client presents a certificate to the broker. And mutual TLS, where both the client and the broker present certificates. We recommend using mutual TLS whenever possible. TLS certificates are typically issued by a so-called certification authority that acts as a trusted third party. The inherent trustworthiness of the certificate is what provides the authenticity for whoever presents the certificate. In most IoT deployments, companies issue their own certificates through their own CA for lower cost and higher accessibility. To securely store certificates and private keys, Java applications such as HiveMQ typically use Java key stores. Trust stores are a special kind of JKS that contains certificates of external systems that you trust. When you use a certificate issued by a custom CA or a so-called self-signed certificate, a trust store is required. How to create the necessary certificates? To create the necessary server and client certificates and the corresponding key stores, we will use the key tool and open SSL command line tools. Create server key store. This creates a Java key store containing a certificate and private key using the RSA algorithm, a key size of 2048 bits, which is valid for 360 days. Make sure to use a secure password. Enter all the necessary data for your certificate. The first question about the first and last name is the so-called common name. Export certificate from the key store to a BEM file. We will use this file with the MQTT command line interface later. Generate a PEM-based client certificate. This creates a certificate and private key in PEM format using the RSA algorithm and a key size of 2048 bits, which are valid for 360 days. When prompted, enter all prompted information. This creates two PEM files. Export the client certificate from the PEM file into an CRT file. Import the certificate into Java Key Store. Make sure that you use an appropriately secure password. We have now successfully created all necessary files. The first one is the Java Key Store that contains the HiveMQ server certificate that HiveMQ broker nodes present to connecting MQTT clients and to each other for internal communication. The second two are the certificate and the private key pair in PM format for our MQTT client. And the last one is the trust tool that HiveMQ needs to trust the certificate that the client presents. What is left to do is using and configuring the created files appropriately. We will use a high availability HiveMQ cluster that is hosted on AWS with an AWS network load balancer in front. Follow the link in the description to find the guide on how to set up your own HiveMQ cluster in the cloud. Copy both Java key stores to the folder of all of your HiveMQ nodes. Configure your TCP listener as a security TCP listener over TLS. Notice that we set the client authentication mode to required. This setting ensures that only MQTT clients that use a certificate that is part of the configured trust store are allowed to connect. More details on configuring a TLS secured TCP listener can be found in the HiveMQ user guide linked in the description. Configure your cluster transport to use TLS as well. Because we use the same certificate for all of the HiveMQ broker nodes, we use the same HiveMQ JKS as our key store and trust store. 
When using individual certificates for each node, make sure to configure appropriate trust stores. After you make the changes to the configuration, restart the HiveMQ process on both broker nodes. Check that the encryption of the internal server communication is working. To confirm this, we'll look for the following statement in the HiveMQ log file. You can see it on the screen now. Next step is to test the mutual TLS listener configuration. We will use the MQTT command line interface to see if everything is working. Let us try connecting to the broker cluster without the use of any certificates. Since our self-signed certificate is not trusted, we see that without adding the CA file to connection, the client won't even start the TLS handshake. Let us add the server PM CA file that we created earlier to our connection attempt. This time a TLS handshake is attempted and fails because we configured our HiveMQ broker to require a client certificate. Let us add the client certificate and the client key that we created earlier to the connection attempt. We need to enter our private key password to access the key. Now the connection is established successfully and we are allowed to subscribe to our desired topic. topic. This demonstrates the correct usage of certificates with the MQTT CLI. Please feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Follow the links in the description for a blog on end-to-end -end encryption and additional resources on cloud security. Subscribe to our channel for more MQTT content.